Uh, just uh, let's start off with the NPC rate decision and if it did drive trade in any way today. I mean, it seems that most people were divided as to whether we'd see uh, a rate change or whether we would see a hike. So clearly uh, coming to the fore where we saw a 25 basis point increase. Yeah. Um, hello, Elena. Um, I think clearly the, um, the rate um, decision have been on the mar mind of markets. Uh, but interestingly, I think uh, it was um, th there was a bit more consensus and investors may be more calm. Uh, we've seen gains in the last four trading sessions. Uh, and I think um, the NPR hike um, being in line with the uh, most um, expectations, both of investors and analysts, uh, would appear to be on track. Uh, so clearly, I think it has affected trading. I think. Um, it will continue to affect the direction of trading um, over the next few days. And I mm -hmm. think we'll be watching keenly to see how investors react uh, to the NPR decisions by the, by the NPC com mm -hmm. committee. Uh, well, it's quite interesting, Adeolu. I mean, just looking at uh, the banks and how they're going to be responding. And, uh, of course, we, we chatted to Dr. Tariba a little earlier. He was saying that he's concerned that credit extension is still very sluggish and the fact that money supply is still below the government, the central bank's uh, benchmark as well. Do you think this is going to have a significant negative impact on banks? Um, I think it will uh, because, um, again, if you look at um, the decision uh, as well as the reasons that were given for it, uh, I guess a lot of people will be wondering uh, why such was taken, um, given concerns um, that monetary supply growth uh, was still below aggregates, <clears throat> given the fact that inflation as well was trending lower. Uh, but what I suspect is that the CBN is actually trying to be proactive, and that decision actually gives some sort of insight into what the key concerns are for the CBN as opposed to the broader market. Um, clearly, the, 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 the Monetary Policy Committee is concerned about government borrowing. Uh, they appear to be, to be um, sort of um, perhaps um, unwilling to give the benefit of the doubt um, to the government, um, despite what appears to be some signs of fiscal responsibility um, as well as discipline. Uh, so if you look at it from the direction of perhaps, um, say, exchange rates uh, with demand coming down at the WDAS market, or if you look at it from the side of monetary supply, it would appear to, 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 to be a bit incongruous. Uh, but I think that what the CBN is watching really is, first of all, like I said, federal government de um, de debt insurance, um, as well as um, what the core uh, monetary in the indexes, which is the base money, uh, which was hinting at when he talked about um, um, provisional figures for December uh, indicating significant growth uh, in base money. I think the key takeaway, however, for all of this is that uh, the CBN is sort of more confident, I um, mean, perhaps giving the banks uh, more, more, more leeway uh, to make their own decisions and do their own thing, uh, which I think is, uh, is, is what investors perhaps need to focus on. I think the, the, the time of sort of protective, prote protectionism, so to to say um, of the banks appears to be over, uh, which he was um, int intimating could mean that uh, the banks are, you know, on sounder footing than they were last year uh, when the help was much needed. Well, that's quite an interesting point that you make. I mean, just looking uh, at the difference between the likes of loan growth going forward with uh, a hike in interest rates and deposit rates also increasing, and the governor did say that we need to start including the other consumers, the ones that do want to start, uh, you know, saving going forward. Uh, do you see that being also a key trend into into this year? Um, I, I, I think what the CBN is trying to do is to sort of... Um, explore further uh, what appear to be a paradoxical trend um, in the um, money supply and deposit rate as well as bank lending um, last year. Uh, what we saw was that um, even before the CBN X rates in September, we're already seeing some sort of improvement in private sector lending. It started to grow as from August. And despite the tightening in September last year, uh, private sector lending continued to grow to, an, to the tune of about $200 billion, uh, per month. Even if you adjust for some sort of um, CBN induced lending from that, uh, it still indicates that there was some of it coming out, of the banking sec uh, coming out of the banking sector. And what that means is that as more deposits continued uh, to flow into the banking sector, and no matter how little, they had to pay some sort of return to, to, to depositors on those funds, then clearly it, it, it was not enough you know, for banks to just sit on those assets and just focus focus on liquid assets, they had to go out in search of yields. And I think that perhaps is what the CBN, um, or what the NPC committee is trying to just explore a bit further here. If the IC rates a bit and deposit rates go up a bit, I think um, it, it could, you know, paradoxically, uh, force banks 
to search for, for higher yields uh, in such a way as to be able to maintain their spread. I think looking at it from the side of depositors who will be bringing in their own money, I don't think that, you know, one, two hundred um, basis points different is going to make a big difference. Mm -hmm. I think either way, deposits are going to flow into the banking sector anyway. Uh, I think the main thing is that the banks are then going to have to compensate uh, for those increasing deposits by actively seeking more avenues uh, from which they could derive yields. Mm -hmm. uh, well, just touching on some of the banks that you like, we, we chanted a little earlier, you're looking at the likes of Fidelity, GT Bank, First Bank, Eco Bank, Diamond Bank, and the likes of Zenith as well. Why have, I mean, clearly a nice spread when you look at the Niger Nigerian banks, uh, you know, going forward. Tell us a little bit about uh, your investment strategy into the banking sector right now. Um, I think our, our position has been a bit clear. Uh, we have always um, been concerned um, about the exposure of banks um, to the federal government um, bond um, bond market. Uh, we've always highlighted in previous issues that you know the, the, the bond portfolios of banks really could play a critical role in if they would have to take additional impairments um, going forward. And um, I think um, even though uh, as markets should focus on um, uh, should be forward looking, I think the the concerns really from from this from the CBN uh, from the FPC hike uh, is basically that. Ba Banks are healthy, they look better going forward. Uh, but for some of them, there's a possibility that on bond portfolios that were in existence before now, uh, which even though there may be some discouragement for them to keep lending to, they may have to take some eats on that front. And so that has been a key part of what our investment strategy is. Uh, we've tried to focus on banks with, on banks with low exposure uh, to the bond market. Uh, one of those is Fidelity. It's holdings are a paltry 10 billion, and therefore we expect very little impairment um, from, from, from that source. Uh, interestingly, given the push also to simulate lending and to the economy, it's also got a very high capital, capital adequacy ratio of um, well over 60 percent, which gives you significant scope um, to you know in increase um, lending and create risk assets, and which also means that you could have um, significant improvement um, in interest income. Yeah. GTB has similar characteristics, uh, but um, our concerns about CAR have been doused yeah. a bit by, by funds from IFC. Fantastic. Thank you so much.